What's up, good people? Mark Holmes here, and as always, I want to say thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report. Without you guys, as well as you ladies, you know that this literally does not work. I hope everybody's having a great day. It is Taco Tuesday of the very first Taco Tuesday of the Dallas Cowboys and Philadelphia Eagles offseason. <laughs> yeah, have a seat on the couch with us, uh, Philly. Um Working here at the Red Brick House, I decided to come down here before the snow uh, started to hit because I just needed to stay busy because I was really not ready for the off offseason. Uh, there's going to be a lot to talk about, a lot of work that's going to need to be done, and um, everybody's mad, and, you know, deservedly so. We bought into thinking that this year was going to be different, only to have Lucy pull the football out from under us again, and literally back to the same shit, and being at square one starting all over. And we'll have to say that we have to look at this um, and literally say everything needs to be on the table. As much as this hurts and everything else, it's crazy because there's only been one consistent thing throughout this whole situation, and that's been Jerry Jones. And you can't, or we, we wish we could change it, but I guess we can't. But as I was working downstairs on this um, fireplace, opening it up, it was nice because I got myself real nice and dirty, you know, got my hands up in it and everything else. It was very therapeutical. And I've been getting people that have been blowing my stuff up. My man Wade says, you know what, just get rid of Dak. Let's just draft another quarterback, tear it all down. You know, I've heard more people say, just get rid of everybody, the coaches, the players, and everything else, and just start all over. Um, you know, from I've heard so many different things. Um, I've even heard some people say, you're really not that far. What you have to look at is, Draft yourself, you got to get a running back, you got to get linebackers, and you got to dig into free agency. And I would say do everything you can to try and support the people that you have. I don't know what the right answer is. We, we, well, no, I'm going to say that maybe that's a, a, an idea that should be tried because we don't go there. But I've been having people that have been talking to me and, and jumping, you know, letting me know about what Mike Fisher and Jane Slater are saying. And so I went through and I listened to Mike Fisher and I'm going through and I'm looking at what Jane Slater, this is actually came out yesterday. Um, Jane Slater says, um, Jane Slater reveals anonymous Cowboys players thoughts on panicked Dak Prescott and listening to Mike Fisher, the way he put it, I guess I got this in the wrong spot. Let me, let me move this. Uh, you, you don't need to see it that as far as the exit interviews, that there were only like four people in the locker room and that Mike McCarthy wasn't part of it. So we don't know whom it was that said this and so on. Um, and I'm going to say it seemed like everybody was nervous and panicked out there. I, I mean, just I know people are going to say, you're just trying to defend Dak. I'm not trying to defend Dak. I'm just kind of pointing out that Dak deserves blame along with 52 other guys that were out there and a coaching staff. If the quarterback is panicked, let, let, let me say this, if the quarterback is panicked because his first read's not there. If you're telling me that all season long that Dak Prescott is only, if he doesn't have his first read, he's panicked, I, I don't know how you end up leading the NFL in touchdown passes with 36 and only having nine interceptions um, during the regular season. Panic would be, I I'm just throwing the ball, you know, just get rid of it because I'm panicking. I, I myself, when I, if, if I were to panic, I don't panic because that doesn't fix anything. You got to keep your head about yourself in all situations. Even if you step on a freaking nail and can't pull it out, you got to figure out, uh, as Jerry Jones would say, um, the, the, the wise man understands his anatomy and when he gets his hand severed in a car accident, understands 
that I got to put a tourniquet on it. The man that doesn't know stuff that panics, he just goes running all off in the woods there and blood just spurting all over the place and ends up croaking and dying. So let me go through what I got from this. Because everybody right now, it's the offseason for the Cowboys, things are going to go downhill as far as people, because people are already checking out. Okay, let me read it to you. The Dallas Cowboys are grappling with the aftermath of a disappointing 48-32 wildcard loss to the Green Bay Packers. Quarterback Dak Prescott, despite a season of strong performances, faces criticism for his play in a playoff game with two interceptions, including a six pick, as deservedly so. As the Cowboys reflect on the loss, an anonymous player expresses frustration with a perceived stubbornness in sticking to schemes on both sides of the ball. So this player is talking about stubbornness on both sides of the ball. Both sides, offense and defense. There were concerns about motion offenses causing problems for the defense and the belief that Prescott panics when the first read is not available, according to NFL Network Jane Slater. So, reading her quotes, another quote, in order to be a great leader, you have to be a great man yourself. Mike puts it all out there for everybody to be successful. I was told they know it's a business and Jerry Jones wants success, but they still believe they are close. Fans can roll their eyes, but I do believe players' thoughts matter as Jerry Jones weighs decisions. Another player was frustrated with the stubbornness to stick to schemes on both sides of the ball. Motion offenses, killing defenses, and concern that Dak Penis when the first read is not there. Now, Dak Prescott himself said, I suck tonight. And I agree, you suck tonight. And so did everybody else in that locker room. Except maybe... Fergalicious, Michael Gallup, and maybe Goldston. Um, I sucked tonight, Prescott said of his play on Sunday. That was it. Got, got, to get, got, to go, got it going a little bit later, but none of that matters at that point. Fought, that's all. I really know, I really know how to do it, but yeah. I mean, it's all about winning. It's about winning in the playoffs and getting to the last game and winning that as well. And yeah, tough. So I don't know what to make of this. You're always, you know, I don't care what group of people, when you have a locker room full of guys, you're going to have guys that believe in you and guys that don't believe in you. That's the nature of the beast, at least in my mind. I would think that you're going to have some people you are going to be upset. You know, people that are going to put the finger, point the finger at somebody else because they don't want to accept blame. And, you know, maybe he's right. I don't have the answer for it. But before you make a blanket statement, if there were only four players that actually were there, I don't know you can, if you can take that as everybody's opinion. We're going to hear a lot of stuff from a lot of different people about the Cowboys and their problems. And people are going to interject and try and infer a lot of different things because in the end, what they want you to do is to read or watch what they're talking about. I don't know that this is the aha moment because I can look at that game and say, everybody panicked. Everybody looked lost. And that goes back to the coaches of making sure the players are prepared and know what to expect. And if they do that properly, your quarterback shouldn't panic. All right, good people. The finger pointing and the blame game is going on. I just hope that Jerry Jones, you know, Whatever it is, I don't care what you do, Jerry. I don't care what you do. If it's fire Mike McCarthy, so be it. If it's keep Mike McCarthy, so be it. But f- let people know, don't keep doing what you did with Jason Garrett. You need to go ahead and have a direction. And at this point, you know, I'm thinking that maybe it is better to go on. But I don't want to see another situation where it's just a flunky for you 
to be able to push over. If you're going to change Mike McCarthy, it damn sure needs to be somebody who's a hell of a lot better. And that's all I have to say about that, good people. All right, good people. I will catch you guys later.